Because, you know, they got real bad attitudes. And we need to, oh, hi, everybody. Did you pick this? Did I pick it? Pick it. I grew it. Oh, oh. no. Well, can't you a pick a pumpkin? Sure. Oh, okay. Doris Ford uh, came up with this a lovely, lovely uh, pumpkin <laughs> floral arrangement. Uh -huh. Floral <laughs> tribute kind of to our what silliness. These, what are these berries? We don't know, but don't they're know. just very appropriate. Isn't that gorgeous? Candleberries? I don't know. They're Candleberries? Not. Well, I don't know. I well, they do have it. hallmark. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> this is our pumpkin show, and yes. we're going to take you out and show you where we, we got our pumpkins that right. we're working with today, except mm -hmm. for mine, which is in a can, and you wouldn't believe it anyway. All right. We've got some letters, too. Well, let's see. This uh, gentleman, let's see, it's Randall B. somebody. Smith, I think it is, but it's a very fancy name. Looks like Thomas Jefferson on the Declaration of Independence. Hmm. It says, gentlemen, I watched your show on the above date, which was in June of 86, and I would like to tell you both that your show was the best cooking show I have ever seen. I'm in the restaurant and bar business from Texas, and I just moved uh, to... Uh, Hammond, Louisiana, to build a real barbecue and real prime steakhouse for the people in this area. Mm. And in all the years, uh, in all the shows, uh, I've uh, watched, and yours is the best. The reason is that both of you get right down to the facts, and there is plenty of good, old-fashioned, broken field, and I can't say the last two <laughs> words. Well, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Smith, for your compliments and kind words, and they're greatly appreciated at this time of our bereavement. <laughs> <laughs> there is a song in Texas they sing that has uh -huh. those words in it. <laughs> Dear Leighton and Larry, I think you ought to change your name to Leighton. I, I think it's pretty good. I, I think we ought to tell everybody that the reason we're bereaved today is that we've both been sorely aggravated this <laughs> afternoon. <laughs> but we're not supposed to That's bring right. things like well, that on here. But so I, I think our friends want to know how aggravated we get sometimes well, in life. Time. Just yeah. like you do. And it's good therapy to go to the kitchen and cook it out. That's what we're going to do. We're going to cook it out. <laughs> Even though I'm past the cooking stage, too old and tough. <laughs> like that. And even though I'm a vegetarian, I enjoy looking and listening to your TV program. Your simple, appetizing approach to food spiced with your ad living is refreshing. What impresses me most is that when you have finished preparing the meal, you both sit down and actually eat it with gusto and relish. Well, we don't have nearly as much gusto, and you forgot the uh -huh. relish yes, this time. So I know, it's terrible. Heavy. We don't eat. This is the only meal we get, ever. By contrast, when those fancy chefs who show off their culinary skills on TV have assembled their meal at the end of the program, we'll sit down and look at it. <laughs> <laughs> we don't like to look at it. We just eat it. Charlotte Hall of uh, Richmond, Virginia. We haven't heard from Richmond. No. Oh, that's terrific. One of our local. And uh, this one says, Dear Larry, I watch your cooking cheap show every time you all are on. Please stay on and please send me all of your recipes. <laughs> We've had a lot of letters like that saying, get rid of that other guy and yes. keep Larry. <laughs> and so we appreciate it. Keep those letters coming in. Dear fellows, I just love your show. I've never seen any like it or should I uh, say anything. <laughs> <laughs> no, if you had received this letter, you wouldn't even mention that. First off, I think you should get some of those Ginsu knives that they advertise <laughs> on TV. And second, that mixer you had looked awfully familiar. Mine disappeared about a year ago. <laughs> <laughs> the real reason I'm writing is, as she goes into a, a recipe request, why do you always seem to use so much salt, Laban? Salt is the spice of life. <laughs> no, why, well, absurd. I'll tell you now, you know, a lot of you that have been with us for a long time know that I have had a heart operation, but that does not necessarily mean that you have a salt problem. In my case, uh, I don't use much salt at home, and I do it because not everybody in the world has to give up everything because all of you haven't had heart problems. No. So uh, let's not get too hardcore about it. This letter, I just want to mention briefly, it was a real treat to read it. It, it was from a Mrs. Waters who said that she wanted to know uh, the recipe where the young man, and I assume that's you, Bly, mixed an egg mixture, rolled it in bacon strips, and baked it in, uh, rolled bacon and egg strip into a wide steak strip, browned all of this. Oh, you know what that was? I baked in the oven in a tomato mixture. Thank you so very much. Well, cool Guardy stew. Yeah, there was a cool Guardy stew, but bless her heart, she sent the whole, <laughs> the whole thing to us. <laughs> Thank you for sending us that recipe. Thanks so And much. finally, we have uh, a letter which we will not say yes. who sent it, but an entire uh, television network that has canceled our show. That, <laughs> so it anyway, says thanks we're silly, inane, we're we silly inane, inane and dumb. But and we are. We're all of those. We're proud of it. We yeah, got to show these. It's amazing that you get places that don't have a, a, a 
sense of humor. Oh, so we do. will they be get... putting up a map of the United States <laughs> on another show and show this one area where nobody has a sense of humor. Right now we want to show you our trip to the, the pumpkin, pumpkin patch. patch. We, we recently went out. We have, this is the first year we've ever gone out in the field with cameras to show how we get some of the fine things we the buy. Yes. Now this is us, we're going to do pumpkins right. today. And, uh, and uh, there, there you see there us we are. peeking out from behind. It's a shocking experience. Yeah, uh, as you yes, guess. and uh, the fact that we had to borrow the pumpkins, <laughs> I think uh, accounted for the fact oh, that look we, there, we look, have, look at we've just, quite an array there. We've just pumpkins. spotted some pumpkins out in the uh -huh. field. It was a good bumper crop and there we are now. I'm going to start trying yeah, to get no, one no, to suit Johnson. That wasn't big enough, no. No, no, we're comparing it, it against... It needs to be more the size of, of the, my the, personal pumpkin there. The biggest thing in the field, <laughs> we're comparing it against there. And, There's oh, one that's got a dimple. All right. Oh, and that's right. Hope he didn't, Just the perfect size. Hope he didn't yeah, rupture himself. It. Oh, well, you know. And uh, <laughs> I'm going to cook that large pumpkin on the show today. Oh, and, well, maybe it is and, just a little bit too large. There and of course, they are. Bly had to have a smaller one, but being this smaller person of the duo, as it keeps being thrown up in my face. <laughs> well, when you got it, you got it. What can I tell you? Oh, <laughs> oh. excuse me. I just got on oh, the set. Oh, the kitchen timer and it's just time went to go on. home already. Are they ready? Give me two more minutes. All right. All right. You got two minutes and that's it. All right. I am going to do something, pumpkin cookies, or you had another name for them too. What were they called? Pumpkin uh, softies. Th softies, yeah, yeah, yeah. We start with, and these are our soft cookies. And they're not real heavy on the pumpkin, I'm happy to say, because you know, too much pumpkin and anything gets deadly. Uh -huh. Remember you did that pumpkin soup that, yes. that year? We all sat down, ate about six spoonfuls, and we didn't have room for anything else. <laughs> And that's true. We didn't. You need to start with three cups of all-purpose flour. Is that a cup? That's a cup. Is that a cup? Looks like a cup to Doesn't me. Doesn't look like a cup. Well, three cups of all-purpose. What we're going to do first is we're going to do the, the flour mix part of it, and then Laban's got something he's going to do with pumpkin over there, if <laughs> we can mention it. And then we'll come <laughs> back and we'll mention the other stuff that goes in here. This takes a while because it has just an extraordinary amount of stuff in it. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, three teaspoons of baking powder. And as we've said before, please use fresh, fresh. baking powder. Because if you don't, you're just out of luck. And this stuff doesn't have a very long shelf life either. What do you reckon shelf life? About a month? Six months. Oh, was it that long? Yeah. How many did I say? Three. three. And one teaspoon of salt. Here we go with the salt. You gotta, I hope it don't get anybody upset, but you got to have a little salt in this. Salt of the earth. Salt of the earth. One teaspoon of salt. That margarine is spitting at you over there. On yeah, the... it's ready to... And let's see here. One and a half teaspoons of cinnamon. You know, cinnamon and cloves have gotten right expensive. Well, ex excuse me while I come over here to this cabinet. Oh, uh, yes, they have. They've gotten terribly dear. So I had to get a smaller one. One and a half. Now, we're mixing all the dry stuff up right now first. And one teaspoon of ginger. Do you remember ginger? Oh, I do. She used to dance with Fred. And they were excellent. Oh, is it time? Oh, yeah. Hang on a sec, ladies cookies, and gentlemen. Then. I need to take out a fresh batch of these things. Well, so while Larry's doing done. that, let me just play over here for a minute. I've got some pumpkin seeds from the pumpkin I cooked today. And I'm doing them in a little butter here, and we're going to salt and pepper them for a little snack for later on. Quarter teaspoon of cloves. Not my pumpkin seeds. Oh, no, no, no. Boink. This is sort of like making a pumpkin pie. Have you noticed? Just about the same amount of stuff. Three quarter of a teaspoon of nutmeg. It just takes an awful lot of stuff, but it's almost like a pumpkin mix, mm -hmm. except you'll find that a little bit later on it gets to be a little more like a cookie dough, or at least hopefully anyway. And, uh, and, huh, and what's left over. Now, is that it? Okay, now what we'll do is we'll just take a, I have found that if you don't have a sifter, the best thing to do is just, just get yourself something and scratch it around in there. And that's what I'm doing right now to mix that all together. And in a couple of minutes, we'll come back and I'll make the other part of the stuff that goes in here to make the dough. Right now, Laban, what are you doing? Well, right now I'm stirring pumpkin seeds 
I've got the seeds out of the pumpkin, I, or one of the pumpkins that I fixed for the show today. Are you frying pumpkin seeds? Yeah, sure am. And they look like they're going to be real tasty. And you fry them until they're brown, and then you add a little bit of salt to them. Here we go again with the salt. I'm sorry, Mr. and Mrs. America, but there's a little salt. And we're going to put a little pepper in them. And I think I'm going to put a little Worcestershire sauce in this, just a ever so small tad, uh, to spice them up just a little bit. And this makes a real neat little treat uh, to have around the house. And you'll notice that they brown very attractively. And uh, I'll show you how to do all of this again in, in just a minute. Now you'll notice over here in front of me I have the pumpkin that we, uh, one of the pumpkins that we nabbed out the patch. That's the Worcestershire sauce in there. We went big pumpkin hunting that day. That big was a lot hunting. of fun. That was a lot of fun. And uh, I'm going to show you a new way to cook this pumpkin. Uh oh. Now, What's you know. What's wrong the, with the old way? Well, you know, sometimes the old ways are the best and sometimes they're not. And this is a new way that I just really think is terrific. And you carve it just like you would for your uh, jack o' lantern for Halloween. And of course, Lair, the, the seeds there in, in the pan right now are the ones that were formerly in my jack o' lantern for Halloween. Mm -hmm. And as you saw the other night, it was very attractive, beautiful, gorgeous. That was beautiful. Pumpkin. How you carved that out on the outside. It looked like a cat. Now, we're going to, uh, well, I'll just put, in, you know this thing is just full of seeds. Eat up with it. And when you, would you stir that for me just a little bit? You just take your big kitchen knife and pull these seeds out. And you'll notice that the seeds for this pumpkin are relatively flat. They're not fat or anything. Well, these smell right good. Mm -hmm. And what you need to do to cook this pumpkin is turn your uh, oven on to 275 degrees. And after you've cleaned all the seeds out of it, and I've just about got all of these out, uh, you, you, go, you salt the inside of your pumpkin real well. You get all of this gunk out. And you salt it real well. Have and you then, found a little gift at the bottom of it? No, not oh, yet, yeah, but I'm hopeful. Right. Then you mess around with this until you find, now you put the top back on and you put it in a, like a turkey roaster in the oven. Mm -hmm. Lower the temperature to 225 and let it go. That's all you have to do. For how long? Until you can stick a fork through it. Hmm. And when that happens, you'll find that the pumpkin does something really funny. <laughs> it collapses. There, there is one that I cooked. Now the difference is this pumpkin is a pie pumpkin. The one I just did over there is a jack-o'-lantern type pumpkin. This one is a gnarly one. It was kind of, it, uh, it was misshapen. It was pink, but it's a pie pumpkin because it has a very thick meat mm -hmm. to it. Now when you do that, when you take the lid, you let it cool in the oven, you take the lid off and it will be full of water. You have to pour that water out because if you've ever cooked a pumpkin before, you will know that they've got tremendous amounts of water in them. They're practically all water. Then all you have to do is you cut it up and here's your pumpkin meat ready to eat and it's very easy to prepare well, that now. That sure beats all that slicing. Sure. And stuff. Can you just squish it out of there? Well, I guess you could, but if there it, it is. Mind to. You just scrape your meat right down well, into it. Isn't the, that pretty? And that's your pumpkin. Well, I'll swear. Okay, so. I got to mix up the stuff that goes in this. Uh, that is right amazing. Yeah. Where did you get that from? Uh, Can you tell? No, I, I'd rather not go into <laughs> he it. He read no, it somewhere. Uh, I know he no, did. Uh, one, of, one our, of our consumer magazines, yes. probably. Okay. Now, what we got to do is make the good stuff that gets mixed with this stuff. We're going to start out with a cup of brown sugar. We're going to mix this up separately, all right? And a half a cup of margarine, which I've had heating for far too long. Now we have time today. Take that and pour it in there. And let's see, that's the margarine, the brown sugar, 
a half a cup of honey. And this is from the Wilkins farm. Oh, yeah. The Wilkins Bee Farm. Wilkins is a good friend of ours, and he has his own set of bees, and once in a while they get on the loose, and a couple of years ago, it's a true story, they sat down on somebody's swimming pool while the poor guy was sitting out beside <laughs> by the millions, and he had to go get them. They do that, you know, they swarm. Yeah, they're and dangerous. And they go ripping off on their own, and you just don't know where they're going to go to. But anyway, he every year gets me some... Some, and this stuff's a little over the hill. It's been sitting around for a while, but it's still good. Two eggs. Interesting goop. Well, it is. There's one. Two. I'm going to have to hustle a little bit here to get this done. A teaspoon of vanilla. I'm just going to guesstimate at this point. Uh, one and a half cups of cooked pumpkin. Now, I had to go to the nearest field to get this can of pumpkin. I just used some canned because I had plenty of it around, all right? Just canned pumpkin if you don't have fresh. Or if you want to cook it up like Johnson just did, just do it. Now, what we're going to do is mix this up real good. And you're supposed to layer this back and forth into a third bowl. I don't have the third bowl, and I don't have the time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take... I'm going to take a little of this pumpkin. Oh, it just slipped right in there. And a little bit of this. The heck, I'm going to take all of that. And I'm going to start stirring this stuff in. We'll stir in about a can of it. You're supposed to alternate back and forth so that you get a good mixture. Today, I don't have time. So I'm just going to mix it because I want you to see what the dough looks like. And I've already taken a fresh batch out, Johnson of the stove today. We'll keep mixing in some more of this. And just before we, uh, we put the stuff in the oven, we're going to throw in some dates, some chopped dates. Ooh. It's the only dates that some of these people on the crew will get for the next week or two. Some of these crew members haven't had dates for longer than they can remember. Well, I don't know. Yeah, one of them, that one, here. That, I know that one named Jason has had several <laughs> chopped dates. But it seems like every one of them that he's ever taken out of here, we've never seen again for some uh -huh. reason. I just don't understand. Anyway, I want to make sure I got all my honey. My honey. Now, you may wish I have discovered to jazz this up with just a little bit more sugar than it calls for. I thought it was a little tame on the sugary side, despite the, uh, you would not think so, despite the fact that we have all that honey in there and brown sugar and vanilla and all that. But I felt that it could have been just a little tad bit sweeter for my taste, but that's sort of up to you. You make a batch up. And uh, now you see this makes a nice thick dough. And what you will do is you will drop these onto a cookie sheet and bake them at 350 degrees for about uh, 15 minutes, a little bit longer. And finally, the last thing we want to do is we want to put in a cup of chopped dates. And boy, I tell you, that's what makes them really good when you bake those dates in there. Now what you'll do, once you've thoroughly mixed this, and you've got to give it quite a bit of, quite a, quite a bit of muscle here. And once you've mixed them, what you'll do is you'll take a, a teaspoon or a tablespoon and you will merely drop them. And when you drop them, they will look like this into a cookie sheet, okay? And uh, when they come out, they're soft cookies. Yeah, they're good consistency, soft cookies, and they'll stay that way. So, there you have it. Do we need to look at recipes, or are I you... I think uh, it might be nice if we did. Huh. And see what they have to say. Yes. The baked pumpkin, all you need is the pumpkin. <laughs> Hollow it out, put some salt in it, and bake it. That's it. Pumpkin cookies, three cups all-purpose flour, three tablespoons, teaspoons, pardon me, baking powder, one teaspoon salt, one and a half teaspoon cinnamon, one teaspoon ginger, quarter teaspoon cloves, three quarter teaspoon nutmeg, cup of brown sugar, a little bit more if you want it sweeter, half a cup of margarine, a half a cup of honey, two eggs, teaspoon of vanilla extract, one and a half cups of cooked pumpkin, that's about a can of that stuff, and a cup of chopped dates. You bake it up at 350 degrees for 15 minutes or so, depending on how hot your oven might be. I'll be right back. All right. I guess I can get my cookies out. It's really, now, I've got another batch of, of seeds here in this frying pan. These are the seeds that came out of the pie pumpkin, and they are of 
a much fatter variety, as you notice. They're not flat. They're like the uh, jack-o'-lantern seeds were. These are much fatter. And you just have to keep cooking them till they get real toasty brown. And uh, you'll find that they're real good. Now, one other thing, with these seeds over here, the raw seeds, you separate them from the pulp and you spread them out on some wax paper. And this is a good job for little teeny child hands because they can pick through and squeeze the seeds loose from the stringy part, and you, which you want to throw away like this. Squeeze the seeds. Toss that away. And you'll find that, uh, that it's easy to do. Let them dry out for a day or so. Well, old Dobbin is uh, patting his foot again, Bly, which means we've only got a few minutes left. Have we... Uh Oh, yeah, we have the, heard from Miss Witch Miss today. Miss Witch has to come who, uh, I knew there was something else that was I hope due she's today. she's careful now. You know, Miss Witch is uh, in that condition. And uh, here oh, she comes. Here now, she goes. take it easy, honey. Let me fly by. Fly here. Now, be careful. Miss Witch is, you know, going to have witchlets <laughs> pretty soon. Not to be confused with chicklets, which are something else altogether. All right, go ahead. Dear boys, we were going to the opera the other night to see Madame Butterfly, which of course is the name of the opera by Porcini, not someone in the house, Porcini. Hmm. And we decided that we ought to go for Italian food after the opera. I said, Rudolph, do you think we have time to go for Italian after the opera? And he said, Hildegard, I just don't think so. Uh, I don't think there will be time. The restaurants are sure to close. Well. What we want to know is, do you have a recipe for some kind of Italian dish I could pre prepare ahead of time because we're going to see this show called Aida next, next month, and I hear that it is by some Italian named Joseph Green, Hildegard Bearings. <laughs> well, well we are going to do Italian next week. Uh-huh. So I'm going to do a nice Italian uh, deep dish thing. Okay. Should be real good. And I'll... Uh, souffle. No, it's not a souffle. It's a, it's a baked thing. Well, it's one of those. It's one of those things. One Can't of those think things. of what it is. Well, it's a casserole. Let's go that's what it says. And look at all the water that's still in that pumpkin. It's, it's amazing. It's incredible. You could put a boat on it and float around in it. My cookies. Right, my cookies. My seed. With me. And I'm going to knock this microphone to Kingdom Come one of these days. <laughs> well, <laughs> let me. Just about ruined it. Let me take a big bite well, of what this. What am I supposed pumpkin. to do with these? Well, just try them. They're like little, well, they're I mean, little snack foods. Do you eat them with your fingers? Mm hmm. Like eating a seed. Well, what's wrong with eating a seed? Well, spit it out in your plate. How gross. Well, I can't, I can't chew it. What am I supposed to well, do try with Well, try one of these. You bird brain. No, those are better. Okay. These have not fried enough. Oh, okay. But these are crunchy. Just about ruined my teeth. They're mm. real good. They really do have a good flavor mm -hmm. to them. Really nice good. flavor. Well, what do you think of these little soft? They're delicious. Aren't you going to eat one? Well, yeah. About get all these seeds out of my mouth. <laughs> well, they're so good for you and nutritious. Mmm. These are better than the ones I did yesterday. I think I'm They're getting on to these. Uh -huh. I believe I am. All right, good. Well, I'll have this any time you want to make them. These are delicious. Well, I might want to make them again. I might not. Well, maybe so. Cook your own pumpkin, folks. Well, I do like these seeds, but the, you know, you got to get them nice and crisp. He well, didn't have enough time on these. Huh. Well, we'll see you next week make for our Italian show. Well, I'm not making excuses. I don't know what you're talking about.